Hey guys, it's Riley Swords here, and today I'll be doing my top 25 comic book movies. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because, like, it is my 25th episode today, so congratulations to me. And, um, if you saw my top 10 Marvel movies, you'll know that I love a lot of superhero movies, so it was possible for me to, like, nail down my top 10. But, yeah, I just thought, 25th episode, just do 20, top 25 superhero movies. I thought, no, since it's my 25th episode, I'll just go all out and do my top 25 comic book movies. So that pretty much covers, like, everything to do with superheroes, I think. So, yeah, let's get to it. Number 25 is TNNT the movie. Now, I know there have been six Ninja Turtle films now. I think there have been six. And this is actually the only one that I've seen. But I do actually like it. I like it. I like how the Ninja Turtles look. I think the new look is absolutely ridiculous. And I think and these are my favourite Ninja Turtles. They look awesome and like, quite like sticks like the source material when it comes to like the turtles. Um, I like it really like shows sure like their brother like the brother Lee whatever in this Leonardo in this was awesome. Raphael is the night watcher. I loved him. Donatello didn't really have a much in this, but he was still really fun to watch. Michelangelo, he's hilarious. I love watching him. I like the story. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that the Shredder isn't in this, but I still do like um, the main villains, the uh, four Stone Brothers or whatever they're called, and like Winters, I think his name is. Um, that was really cool, and you, see, you still see the Foot Clan, so that was cool. So yeah. Overall, it is a really good movie, so that's like 25 on my list. So, yeah. 24 is Kick-Ass. This movie, I do love this movie. I mean, it's got, it's like realistic and hilarious at the same time. Like, I love it where, like, um, all these guys who try and, like, break into the car, and he's coming and he's like, oh, well, what do you think you could break into a car? And he, like, tries to beat him up, then he just gets, like, stabbed straight away and hit by a car. So... That was hilarious. Um, um, Nicholas Cage in this was awesome as Big Daddy. He was hilarious. Hit Girl, she's always fun to watch. Um, Red Mist, um, he's hilarious with his car and stuff. Um, so yeah, I do love it. He's like a comic book fan, and he likes why they don't try to be a superhero. So he becomes a superhero and becomes pretty famous. So yeah, it's realistic and hilarious. That's why it's number twenty-four. Number twenty-three. Is Avengers Assemble. Right, don't kill me, guys, but personally, I think this movie is overrated. I mean, I do like this movie. Um, it's pretty good. Like, you see, like, Thor, Captain America, uh, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Hawk, and Iron Man, like, come together to, like, fight off Loki and stuff. But I think it just concentrated too much on, like, explosions and good effects and actually relationships with the characters, like, between the characters. Well, I guess it is a pretty good movie. I give it like, uh, like seven point eight out of ten. I suppose say. And well, I still think it is kind of overrated, but I do like this movie. So yeah. Number twenty-two. It's the Incredible Hulk. This is my favorite Hulk movie. I mean, there was the other one with Eric Banner it was called Hulk, and I've got another. Um, Hulk movie called The Death of the Incredible Hulk based on like the 70s TV show and that was actually going to be on this list and I just thought no I'm not kidding this is better Ed Norton's Bruce Banner is the best I prefer him over Mark Ruffalo I think they should use Ed Norton in the Avengers Liv Tyler in this is Betty uh, Brown Betty Ross that's it where did I get Betty Brown from oh yeah sorry Betty Ross uh, she was really good as Betty Ross Tim Roth is the abomination he was awesome Ross is in here, William Hart, I don't know who that is, so I'll probably uh, say it, but I like the general, I don't know if the general's William Hart or not, I don't know. Um, I like the general in this, it's good. Uh, the fight between Hawk and Abomination is awesome. Uh, like I said before, I know this Bruce Banner is the best, I love it. So that's why it's number 22. So yeah, I think it's like 22, 25, 25, 22, yeah. 21. Just Thor. Uh, this movie is about Thor, and he's like being arrogant of his power, and he wants to cause war between him and the um, Frost Giants, and then so Odin, his dad, uh, takes away his power and curses him to Earth. So yeah, Thor's adapted to life on Earth. He like just falls from grace, fell from grace, 
then he finds his hammer, and he's like, he's like really close, like, yeah, find my hammer, tries to pick it up, but he can't pick it up, because it's not worthy. So yeah, he's pretty sad. But then, like, Loki becomes king, because Odin goes into the Odin sleep, and he sends the destroyer to destroy Thor, and then Thor then becomes worthy, he says, kill me, instead of killing everyone in this town. So the so Mjolnir, obviously, thought he was worthy, and he came to Thor, and he got his powers back, and he, so he defeated the uh, destroyer, um, and fought Loki, and we thought Loki died, we also didn't, because he's got like a train of further movies. So yeah, this movie is really good, classic superhero tale. Um, so yeah, that's why it's number 21 on this list. Oh yeah, Heimdall, whatever her name is, I really liked that character. So yeah, he was cool, so yeah. Um, number 20 is Fat Man Forever. This is an underrated movie, I think. I mean, well, this is often compared to Batman and Robin. That's bullshit. I think this is ten times better than Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin was a disaster, and I love this movie. I love Val Kilmer's Batman. Um, Jim Carrey's Riddler was awesome. Didn't like, um, uh, Tommy Lee Jones's Two-Face in this. Same thing I didn't like. I like that they brought Robin into it. He wasn't that annoying in this. And he was, like, sympathetic. His parents just died. So it was, like, relatable. Um, you, know, you can understand, like, his, like, anger and stuff. And I, like I said before, I love Al Kilmer's Batman. He's like under that's an underrated character. Um, you see like various Batman costumes in this, which I thought was awesome. Um so yeah, Batman Forever, I think was pretty good. So yeah, that's why it's number twenty. Nineteen. It's Captain America the First Avenger. I do love this movie. I think this is an underrated movie as well, because like, he really shows, like, uh, I didn't like Captain America until this movie, but when I saw this, it's like, oh, cool, he's like a really cool person. Like, I love it that he's like, what's this little skinny guy? He like, what that doctor said, he said, like, a weak man doesn't, uh, no, a weak man knows the, like, I don't know, effectiveness of strength and stuff, so it's not, like, greedy or something. So when he does get it, he'll, like, use it wisely, because I've never had it before. But a already strong man. He, he already knows what's like to be strong, but he wants more power, so it'll like make him more bad, or something like that. And it was like Hyde, not Hyde, uh, Red Skull and Captain America. And that was for example. Captain America is just really cool in this. So I love it that it was based on like, World War II. That was awesome. Um, I like the love interest, for what name was, but she's there. Like, oh, wait, no, she's there as well. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones is um, Colonel or General or whatever he was. I really liked him. Um, Bucky is the best friend. Um, I think she was just like looking up Captain America and stuff, like when he was just like a little weakling. So yeah, I love the ending where he like crashed into the ice. He has that talk with, um, I don't know what's the name. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that we crashed into the ice. It's emotional and I love it. Number nineteen. Um, number eighteen, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Now, the reason these two are, like, so close is because I keep on debating which one's better, First Avenger or Winter Soldier. But I think Winter Soldier takes it just by, like, a millimetre. Because I love seeing Captain America adapt to, um, to our modern world. Um, I don't really see, like, Foot Falcon in it, but I guess he was fun to watch. Um, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this. But, um, when Captain America finds out that Bucky is the Winter Soldier, um, that was, um, uh, awesome. You got, uh, what's his name? Alexander Pierce. I think it was like um, a good villain. Black like, Widow in this, so you know, like jump around and choke people and all that stuff. That's always fun. Uh, Nick Fury, you get to see his eye, so yeah, I guess that's pretty good. A bunch of explosions and actions. Actually, some really good action. Um, uh, what else is there? Uh, I don't know, it's just a really good movie. You can see like a bunch of twists, like Hydra's infiltrated shields, and it's like. I don't know a while. I think seeing the Winter Soldier in action was really awesome. I do think though it, it called the movie Captain America: The Winter Soldier. I think they should have based it like more around Winter Soldier than they did. But that's the only thing I really dislike in this movie. So yeah, number eighteen on the list. Number seventeen. Probably gonna be surprised at this, but it is a comic movie, comic book movie. If you think about it, seventeen is Mortal Kombat. I'm probably thinking like. Oh, what you're doing, it's not a comic book movie, it's a video game movie. But I'm pretty sure the comic book came out 
uh, before this movie, and um, uh, I've read the comic book, and I say this is based more on the comic book than it is the video game, because in the video game, you didn't really know what the story was, and in the comic book you did, I say it's more based on that. So yeah, that's why I'm based on this comic book movie. Now, a lot of people don't like this movie, because, like, the first time I watched it, I didn't like it either. Uh, because I think that some of the costumes and stuff were crap and it weren't very much like the video game. But then I just thought, um, I just, that's how I just thought, forget about the video game, just imagine this is a standalone movie, and this is the first thing to know about Mortal Kombat. Watched it again, and I really did like it. I think it was awesome, Luke Kang in this was awesome. Um, Johnny Cage, he was good casting. Um, Scorpion Sub-Zero, I think they should have had a bit more screen time, but they were still fun to watch. Um, the acting in it is a bit mediocre. The rep the effects on reptile look really crap, but um it was still fun when like went into that I don't know statue thing they fought Liu Kang. So that was really cool. So yeah, uh, overall I think this is a good movie. So that's why it's number seventeen on the left, yeah, I was right. Seventeen. Number sixteen is X-Men First Class. Now, I think this movie is pretty good. I mean, I love seeing the origins of um, Charles Xavier and Eric Lenscher. I think that was uh, really good. Um, you see, I don't know what his name was, that guy, that devilly guy, I forgot what his name was. It's at the back of my mind, but I forgot it. Um, Smash the Show was a good feeling. Emma Frost in this was good. Um, I guess that Jennifer Lawrence's mystique was alright. I mean, I prefer um, Rebecca Romain Stamos, or whatever her name is now, keep on getting mixed up, but I prefer um, her mystique over Jennifer Lawrence. But Jennifer Lawrence was still a good mystique. Uh, James McAvoy's um, Xavier was really good. Um, Michael Fassbender's Magneto was pretty good. So yeah, I think it's a good story. It's like a, I think it's kind of like a Cold War movie, and I, and I kind of like that. So that was really fun. And that was good. The only thing I didn't like though was that at the end they had to wear those silly suits. And I didn't like it, that yellowy thingy. But you saw Havoc in this. He's my favourite um, person in the X Men universe. Um, and also there was Banshee. Uh, you saw Darwin, and some other uh, less important characters. But overall, this is a really good X Men movie. So yeah, 16. Uh, number 15 is The Amazing Spider-Man. I think this is a pretty good movie. I mean, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I wish they made Spider-Man 4 instead of this. But this is a decent reboot. I mean, I think Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was um, pretty good. Um, I didn't like his Peter Parker as much, though. He didn't seem like a proper nerd. They seem like an average person, but his Spider-Man was good. I didn't like the costume, but his personality and like wit is really good. Um, I like it that they gave him artificial web shooters instead of like artificial, like the original Spider-Man. Um, they got Gwen Stacy's love interest instead of Mary Jane. So I think it's a space more around the comics. Um, I did like Lizard in this, but I think he should have had like like the snout on him. And he should have been wearing like his um, his lab coat like all the time. And I do think it's a pretty good reboot. I think it's based more around the comics and I like that. So yeah, number 15 on the list. Number 14. Is Superman the Movie. 1978 classic. Um, if you saw my last video, I did do Superman the Movie versus Captain America the Winter Soldier. And you'll know that this one. Um, and I still think it is better than the Captain America the Winter Soldier. Yeah, the effects aren't great, but it's, it's 78, so you can't really, like, blame it on that. Um, I think the story's great. The origins of Superman is handled really well. You see his, like, little, like, in Krypton, where you see jor and all that stuff. Uh, when it comes to Earth, I was, like, being kind of bullied as, like, a kid and stuff. And he's, like, showing off his powers, like, they're in, like, a car, and he, like, just legs it. And he, like, uh, makes it for them. Uh, that was funny. His relationship with Lois Lane, that was pretty good. I didn't actually kind of, I found Lois Lane quite annoying in this movie. I prefer the Lois Lane in Superman Returns, but Lois Lane in this was still pretty good. Lex Luthor, he was great. You see um, 
Otis in this. He was um, hilarious, or same like Mr. Luke Thor. I think that looked like pretty funny. Uh, when you see uh, the whole thing with the rocket thing, the missiles, uh, that, that kind of that did kind of annoy me because like he can like fly around the world uh, so fast that he can reverse time, but he can't fly around the world fast enough to catch two missiles going in different directions. Yeah, that is kind of like a mistake. But I'll just ignore that. The acting is really good. Christopher Reeve's Superman is amazing. I think he um, he is like born for that role. He played Superman amazingly. Um, so yeah, overall this is a really good movie. Number fourteen on the list. Number thirteen is The Dark Knight. Yeah, no, don't kill me. Most people probably expect her to be much higher. Well, and I do really like this movie. I mean, Heath Ledger's Joker was amazing. You can see a picture of them there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's awesome. Um, the plot is great. It, it's kind of felt like a uh, like a crime thriller. But it's just a bonus that had Batman and Joker in it. That was awesome. Uh, like I said, Christian Bale's Batman it isn't as good as Michael Keaton's, but the actual bat suit itself, uh, they changed it from Batman Begins, and it is awesome. Um... Harvey Dent, he he was good in this, and I think though that his transformation into Two Face was a little bit black and white. I mean, I think he just snapped too quick. I know it's not very realistic, but everything else, Batman was about to turn himself in because uh, Joker said every day that the you know, Batman doesn't turn himself in, um, he'll kill more people. So Batman didn't really have a choice. And the whole thing with the boat was awesome. It was intense, and I loved it. Um, so overall, this is a really good movie. But, like I said, like before, I do love loads of superhero movies, so this did pretty well to make 13, I think. So, yeah, 13 on the list. Number 12 is X Men First. No, X Men Days Future Past. Now, if you saw my West as X Men movies, this was number 5, but I only watched that once in the cinemas. But when I bought this and watched it on DVD, I like, watched it better, and I thought, oh crap, this is actually a really good movie. It says on the back here, best X-Men ever. Uh, I don't want to say it's the best X-Men ever. But, and it's pretty good. At first, I thought that, like, it didn't make sense with the original trilogy. But actually, it actually kind of does, because, like I said, that Jean Grey wouldn't, it wouldn't stop Jean Grey from going insane. It wouldn't stop Professor X from dying. And it wouldn't stop uh, Cyclops from dying. Um, but, in a way, it kind of did, because if Mystique never joined Magneto in the Brotherhood, then, like, that was a key thing like in X Men and X Two, so yeah, if, they did, if the Brotherhood was never formed, uh, which I don't, which I think that like tells us in this, then yeah, I don't think they would have like lost it. And people would have died. So yeah, I apologise for my mistake in my worst assessment movies. And I do think this is like better, than, definitely better than I thought before. Seeing Wolverine go back through time uh, was pretty good. Like if you saw my other worst assessment movies, um, you know that like I said characters were too old for their roles, like Storm. I mean, like Harry, Halle Berry as Storm, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart, and even um, Hugh Jackman. And I look again, and I thought, no, nah, I still think they're a bit too hard to play their roles. But they did pretty well, considering, like, their age. Um, but yeah, going back to time, you see, like, Quicksilver. Uh, that scene was awesome, where he's, like, going around and stuff in, like, the, um, that prison. Um, that was really, fu that was really fun. Um... Mystique had a cute role in this, which I liked. She never really had like a big part in the X Men movie before, but in this she did. Um, you see, like, uh, what's um, young Xavier? Um, how he's like struggling with like his titles and stuff. So he had like that injecting, whatever, that like, those drug things, helping control his power so he can walk and not have his titles anymore. Then he says, like, you know what? No, this is who I am. I'm just gonna like lose my legs and have. Um, my mind power because like, that's who I am. So that was awesome. Um, I, I do love um my fast benders Magneto. I think you play doing Magneto pretty well. Um, so overall, it is a pretty good movie. So yeah, number twelve on the list. Number eleven is Superman three. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh man, how could you put Superman 3 over Superman 1? Well, this is just my opinion. And I do personally think that Superman 3 
is the best Superman movie because it's just my favourite Superman movie. And um I think it's good. I think it makes like it was funny in some parts, but it was also serious and it made, they didn't feel like I, I don't know, crammed in. Um you see like a dark side of Superman when it comes to evil Superman. Um the like computer guy, I've got to say Gus, Augustus summer. Um he was really funny. He was like he wasn't really a villain, but yeah, it was still really fun to watch. Um, I love the fight between uh, Clark Kent and Evil Superman. I love Slane isn't in this as much, which I like. He goes back to his roots in Smallville and meets someone else. And I do love this movie, so that's why it's number 11 on the list. Num now I'm entering my top 10. And yeah, it's my top 10. Number 10 is Ghost Rider. Sorry guys, I know like loads of people hate this movie. And ever since like I heard that loads of people hate it, I watched it again. I thought, and um, okay, yeah, it does have its fair share of like cheesy dialogue and and whatnot. But other other like th besides that, it is an awesome movie. I like seeing Johnny Cage's relationship with his dad. Out uh, Black Heart, I liked him in this. Like he did kind of like Captain from Twilight, I guess. But still, the other one was sort of like a like a uh, porcupine. I don't think I would have been stupid if they had that in this. Um, Eva Mendes, I think that's how you say your name. Um, I liked him in this as a love interest. Carter Slade, I love his character, he was awesome. Uh, they're like um Ghost Rider and Carter Slade are like driving to um San Vanganza. Um I love seeing like the music and everything. Um that was just really awesome. Um the final fight between Ghost Rider and Black Heart was awesome. I think that Nicholas Cage was a good Ghost Rider. So overall, I think this is a good movie. There is a bit of cheesy dialogue here and there, but other otherwise, I think it's a really good movie. So yeah, number ten on the list. Number nine is X Men: The Original Two Thousand. Uh, this is an underrated movie, I think. I mean, in some I um, what made superhero movies serious ramp. It was out of Blade, this and Spider Man. Uh, you all know that I think that Spider Man had the most impact. I still think this movie is awesome. Um, and like, did the right thing because they're like loads and loads of people in the X Men universe. But this one, they just got them um, four main heroes, four main villains, and it all worked, worked really well. Um, I like seeing uh, Rose character. I think she was very um, um, sympathetic and stuff with her pals and stuff. And I don't think you really saw that in the comics. But we saw her in the house, she's struggling with her pals, that she can't touch anybody. Seeing Wolverine in like Canada where he's like fighting like cages for money and stuff. I'm do glad though they changed the clanking every time you punch someone. I think that's kind of silly. But this was early in the franchise, so yeah, they were just experimenting really. Um, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine though is just top notch. That's up there with like um, Christopher Reeve's Superman, I think. Like a superhero portrayal. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and uh, Christopher uh, Reeve's Superman are like up there for like the best. Um, betrayals ever. Yeah, it was really good. Um, you saw like Magneto in this. Ian McKellen's a perfect Magneto. Um, you see Sabretooth in this. Sabretooth looked awesome. Um, Mystique. Um, Rebecca, whatever. Um, I forgot what her last name is now. Like Remigen, Romaine, whatever. I don't know. Um, she was a great Mystique. I think she was better than Jennifer Lawrence for like a mile. Um, Toad in this. It was like kind of funny to watch. Um, it was great. I love it at the end with the whole Statue of Liberty thing, where like um, I might need to put like Rogue in like that thingy machine thing to try to make everybody mutants and fight between Wolverine and Sabretooth. I loved. Um, I loved like so how how the Brotherhood may send it to Kelly a mutant, um, but he actually died. It didn't work. So that's why. So that's why X Men's got a problem because we need to try to do that to everyone in New York. So overall, this is an underrated movie. I love it, um, and it's like it's one of the reasons why I have so many superheroes today. So yeah, number nine on the list. Number eight is Batman Begins. Uh, yeah, this is my favourite Batman movie of like the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, Batman's origins is handled like brilliantly. Um, I love seeing like him join the League of Shadows. And then he comes back and he's like, I fight him like Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow. Um, I love um, Katie Holmes's uh, Rachel Dawes. I think she's better than Maggie Jenner Hall. 
the best to you, Maggie, Jill and Holt. If you're watching this, I do think that Katie Holmes is a better Rachel. The bat suit in this isn't great. It's better than the Dark Knight, but it's still good in this. Um, like I said before, Bat Dark Knight, Christian Bale's Batman, um, was pretty good. And not as good as Michael Keaton's, though, but it was still pretty good. Um, like I said before, his origins was just handled perfectly. So yeah, I love this movie. Number eight on the list. Number seven is X Men Two. Now, I was kind of discussing what's better, X Men Two or X Men One, but in the end, like, this is just a brilliant movie. Now, like, you get like a deep relationship with characters. It brings Nightcrawler in. It brings um, Deathstroke in. Not Deathstroke. Deathstrike. Sorry, Lady Deathstrike. Um, I mean Pyro in. Well, they had Pyro in the first one. They had a big role in this. I love Pyro. He's my favourite um, X Men villain. Um, you see bits of Wolverine's uh, origins in this. Now when he goes to Alkali Lake, um, the whole thing with Striker, I always like get confused with stuff because he's like Striker gave him his claws. That was awesome. And seeing where Pyro is like, like blowing up all the police cars and stuff, I love that scene. It's awesome. The raid on the school, it was um, just amazing. Um, and the X Men eventually joined the Brotherhood to defeat Striker. And overall, this is almost a perfect movie. When it comes to like superhero sequels, this is up there with the best, in my opinion. So yeah, number one, two, three, four, five. Number seven on the list. It's just awesome. Number six. Don't kill me, guys, but I do like this movie. Uh, number six is Daredevil. Oh, this is considered like one of the worst superhero movies, but I don't think it is. I mean, I do love this movie. I think the Ben Affleck's Daredevil was awesome. Jennifer Gardner's um, Electra, I think um, she was really good. Um, Colin, Colin Farrell's um, Bullseye, he was awesome. Um, I think the kind of thing I should have had like the original Bullseye costume for Bullseye, but it was a pretty good thing with like the thing in Griffin said that was awesome. Um, Michael Clark Duncan's um, Kingpin. He was really awesome. I think it's actually kind of like, I think it's good that they turned Kim, Kim Pin black because it seemed like more of that like gangster boss thing of. So I think if he was white in this, it wouldn't have been as good. Not being racist or anything, I'm just saying that Michael Clark Dun getting Michael Clark Duncan as Kim Pin was a really good move. Because um, he's just an awesome Kim Pin. It says it all in there. He's just so awesome. Um, I love the music in this. Um, the soundtrack in this is just amazing. Um, I love it. Uh, I like seeing uh, Ben Affleck's relationship with his dad, how his dad was a boxer, and seeing how he got his name and all that stuff. I think this is just a fantastic movie. So yeah, number six on the list. Number five is Batman. Uh, the original 89 Michael Keaton um, movie. This is awesome. This is my favourite Batman movie. We saw my worst best Batman movies, which was my first worst best. Um, this was at 2 and Batman Begins was at 1, but I watched the Batman movie through again and I just thought, this takes it, I mean, this is brilliant. I mean, Jack Nixon's Joker isn't as good as Heath Ledger's, but it is still pretty good. Um, Michael Keaton's Batman is just brilliant, it's his presence, it's like cool and collected, and he is just awesome. The bat suit in this, I like it. Um, Michael Keaton played a good Batman and Bruce Wayne, which I thought was like kind of rare, and like, um... Um, Batman movie because normally like they they normally play like either a good Batman but not a good Bruce Wayne or a good Bruce Wayne but not a good Batman. Michael Keaton did both of them astoundingly. It was great. Um, Kim Basinger as a love interest. I think that was really good. I think that eight, 1989 they like made like a realistic turn on this. Like people thinking like he's like a six foot bat and he like he appeared to be like like a, some kind of creature and like his um. His enemy's eyes like strike fear into his enemies. Um, the Batmobile in this was just really, really awesome. And this is my favourite Batman movie. So yeah, number five on the list. Number four. Iron Man. Now this was actually um, going to be high up, but these next three I just all love so much. But this is just a really awesome movie. This really surprised me when I went to go see it because I didn't like Iron Man before this movie. 
I only known Iron Man before this from um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance for the PS2. I didn't like this character. I didn't think he seemed like a superhero. He just seemed like kind of like a Dracula, but like his black slick back hair, like his mustache and his beard. I think his old costume looked ridiculous. It was just like like gold metal, with like a red vest or something. I didn't. I just didn't like it. But excuse me. When this movie came out, I thought, holy shit, um, Iron Man is awesome. His origins, like, like I said, like some other um, films, like I always mention the origins. But his origins in this is handled awesomely. And um, he's stuck in the cave, and he makes the Mark One armor, armor, and he breaks out, and then he gets like the art reactor in this thing, and he makes the Mark Two, and then he paints it, makes the Mark Three. And um, Iron Manga, he is a good film. I did not know about Iron Manga before this movie. Um, but Iron Manga was really good. The fight at the end was awesome. Um, when he goes to like, I don't know where he goes to, but he destroys all the weapons, uh, all, all the Stark weapons. That was really fun to watch. Like, where he like, takes down the Ten Rings. That was awesome. And overall, this is a brilliant movie. So yeah, number four on the list. Um, number three, now, my opinion of this movie has changed like a lot since before, uh, so I moved it uh, much higher, but number three is Spider-Man 2. I just watched this recently on Blu-ray on like uh, my grandparents' like 3D TV thing, and it is amazing. I'm not just saying it's good for like the sound quality and that stuff, but with like Blu-ray and stuff, can really like get into it more. And I can definitely see why it's considered one of the best superhero movies out there. Like some of my best Marvel movies, this was only at nine. I watched this again, and it is amazing. It's like I probably will give this a ten uh, now that I uh, watched it again. It's just a great story. Like everything's going really crap for Peter, and he starts losing his powers, and then he just gives them up. I think um, Alfred Molina is an absolutely perfect. Um, Doc Ock, and Doc Ock as himself is just a brilliant villain. If you saw, like, I mentioned Spider-Man 2 in another video, I forgot it was, but I said that Doc Ock is an overrated villain. I apologise for that. I watched this again. He's not an overrated villain. He's a brilliant villain. Um, J. Jonah Jameson in this is just hilarious. Um, you see Aunt May, like, talking to Peter and stuff. Like, like, I love the whole, like, old, like, wise person advice stuff on the person. That was awesome. Uh... Peter and Mary Jane's relationship, you get more of a like impact on that or whatever. Um, Harry's hatred for um, Peter for like Spider Man grows and stuff, and makes a deal with Doc Ock if he kills Spider Man, and they give him the Tridium. And at the end, where you see uh, Harry finding all the Green Goblin stuff, it really builds up Spider Man Three, which was a disaster. But if you just think about this as a movie alone, this is a fantastic movie, great story. Great relationship, uh, deep relationship with the characters, um, and it is just amazing. So yeah, number three on the list. Uh, number two is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, now I've actually, um, this is, I actually put this, I actually put this in here last minute because I've actually got this was a comic book movie, and this is like one of my favourite movies of all time. Um, because it is um, brilliant. Uh, it's right up my street. It's like a um, Scott Pilgrim. He's a bass guitarist in a garage band. And then he meets like Ramona Flowers. Who's like the girl of his dreams. Like literally. I mean if he has, and he's continued to, yeah. if he has to continue to date her. He'll um, have to defeat her seven evil ex-boyfriends. And he does. And all, all the exes are just really fun to watch. Um, they're really awesome. Uncle Sarah is a great Scott Pilgrim. Uh, well, there's, there's, there's Knife Chow in there. Like, there are all the exes. So you've got um, Matthew Patel as the first evil ex-boyfriend. Second evil ex-boyfriend is Lucas Lee. Then there's um, Todd. Todd, Todd something, I forgot what his thing was. Then it's Roxy. And then it's the, uh, the Kanaki Army twins or whatever. And then there's um, Gideon Graves. It's the final boss, and then it is awesome. The effects in this are astoundingly good. Um, what can I say about it? It's just a brilliant movie. One of my, my favourite movies of all time. And that's why it's number two on the list. Uh, the same room. Let me just check it. 
number one is if you're familiar with like my channel, you know that I love this movie to bits and it hasn't changed. Number one, Spider Man. This is my favourite comic book movie, like like by far. I mean like Tobey Maguire's Spider Man is just amazing. I don't think Kirsten Dunst is as bad as people say. I think she uh, she's actually kind of a good actress and she played Mary Jane pretty well. Harry Osborne, it was great. Spider Man's Origins was was um awesome. Um, William Defoe's Green Goblin was awesome. I don't think the costume is as bad as people say. I think the costume is actually pretty awesome. Um, what can I say about it? Like, it's got my three favourite Spider-Man costumes in here. Um, the Sam Raimi suit, the wrestler suit, and the Battle Damage suit. They're my three favourite Spider-Man suits in all this movie, so that's a bonus. Um, the final battle between Spider-Man and Green Goblin um, in like, the ruins is my favourite superhero duel. And it's, it's just a really awesome movie. You see, like, his relation, when um, Uncle Ben dies, it has, like, an impact on Peter. It's like, yeah, great power, comes great responsibility. So he becomes a superhero, fights crime. And this is just an awesome movie. It's so underrated. Um, but in my opinion, it is the best superhero movie. One of my favourite movies ever made. So, yeah. Number one. So, yeah, thanks for watching my top 25 comic book movies. Make sure you watch like my other top tens and watch the best and uh, versus series and make sure you watch my next video. So yeah, see ya.